Hi everyone, we will have a presentation together on engineering simulation for innovation as presented at Impact Innovation event at Technogym in October 2017. Engineering simulation is becoming a key enabler for innovation, surpassing its initial role of a simple tool for validation and verification. With this presentation, we would like to go through what, why, and how to approach engineering simulation in this new form. Your presenter today will be Dario Morandotti, Principal Consultant at EngineSoft and as a voluntary work director for the branch Lombardy of the Project Management Institute, Northern Italy chapter, and Hello everyone, I'm Alessandra Pelosi and I am a solution consultant for digital innovation. Together with Dario, I'm part of the business consulting team of EngineSoft. Okay, so let's start with a classical uh, innovation model process uh, that go through strategy, design, uh, review, and two major areas enablers and governance. So engineering simulation is a key enabler, but is shifting its role from a pure review enabler and means validation and verification tool for virtual prototyping. It's entering more the design phase, definition and exploration, and even the strategy phase, the feasibility evaluation. This is due uh, to a combination of factors. First of all, a better infrastructure availability, then a better software capabilities. They are able now to simulate more precisely physical phenomena, advanced method, and new ways of working. There is more an inclination now to, to virtually explore option in advance, and also a general culture cultural environment that stimulates business agility and exploration. So in a sense, the engineering simulation is, is really a key enabler of business agility. Engineering simulation is not something new since it's been here since the early 70s. Over the time, it has been used in a wide range of application and industries from manufacturing process design, such as casting, forging, plastic injection, and more recently additive manufacturing, to product design with structural analysis, virtual crash test, multi-body analysis, fluid dynamics, electromagnetics, thermal acoustics, and noise reduction. In the last three to five years, uh, there were significant improvements in uh, engineering simulation uh, through coupled multi-physics domain, through improved capabilities to simulate mixed and special fluid, and in a more system level analysis, for example, including embedded software. And finally, uh, multidisciplinary design optimization has emerged as a key tool for uh, exploratory design approach and also for topologic optimal definition. So let's have a look to two examples of leading edge simulation. The first one is a coupled body dynamic and fluid dynamics for the aqua planning evaluation. And on the second one is the detailed fluid dynamic study of an aviation turbine operation. The technological infrastructure allows now to study phenomena like aquaplaning in matter of hours or day, in this case, one second of simulation represent is, uh, is given by approximately 12 hours of computation instead of a week or months. The turbine example has a fairly sophisticated simulation for detailed validation. This goes in very much detail and investigating uh, temperature flows and to avoid uncertainties. 
So while the turbine example is used in the review and prototyping phase typically, the car one is used to evaluate perhaps hundreds of options in concept and feasibility phase. This type of simulation considered at the top only a few years ago are becoming now more popular and readily available for any organization. Simulation is also one of the nine key enabling technologies of Industry 4.0. They are actually interconnected te technologies and simulation offers a substantial base for many of them, such as analytics, augmented reality, additive manufacturing, system integration, and robotics. In practice, every product, whether a bottle cap, a ship, a fitness machine, is or will be soon designed and used in a virtual prototype based on simulation. Now, let's see more in detail what are the potential business impacts of engineering simulation, also from a strategic point of view. And in particular, we can identify four major impact areas. The first one is product revenue growth. Uh, engineering simulation impacts on revenue growth uh, since it helps designing new innovative products, uh, either by innovating existing ones or by acquiring new market segments. Secondly, engineering simulation helps uh, evaluating the material and manufacturing cost of newer existing products in order to identify and also to reduce those that have highest impact on product development. Engineering simulation also provides the necessary information and guidelines to make the better use of current assets. For example, in terms of resources used by the end product, uh, by increasing energy efficiency, for instance, um, or in terms of resources needed for manufacturing by increasing development and prototyping efficiency. Finally, we should consider intangible drivers. This sometimes is a forgotten dimension, but it actually can be very effective. Uh, we can think about uh, uh, increasing the uh, enterprise knowledge sharing or by making a better market reputation or finally by increasing competitiveness. Let's see now four real examples of industrial application in which engineering simulation uh, has been applied and let's see how they match these four uh, value drivers. The first example is a simulation of a boiler for domestic purpose during its design phase. The values that we addressed here uh, were both product revenue growth and product cost reduction. Let's see how. In the animation above, you can see the main part of the boiler that is represented by an intake vent and by some fins that distribute the airflow. These can have basically any shape, number or dimension and therefore it will be almost impossible or it will be very time consuming to determine the optimal configuration through a traditional or a trial and error approach. Therefore, here the challenge was to completely redesign the boiler using free dynamic simulation to identify a new solution that was more effective as it presented better flow distribution, more silent because all vibrations were reduced, more economical since it was simpler and it had standardized components, and finally, more efficient, since it had lower operating cost and less energy consumption. What's more interesting in this work is that um, most of these um, requirements were competing with each other. Just think about effectiveness and silence. Therefore, here we used a multidisciplinary optimization technique to evaluate different options and to know the boundary of uh, feasibility. Finally, this led to a 50% reduction of time to market and 12% reduction of project cost. Let's see another example. Um, this was um, a work for a train supplier uh, during the bid phase. 
This train supply bid was issued by a transport operator in search for a better design for a high speed and high capacity train. For our customer, winning this bid meant product revenue growth and also commitment over the years. So it was fundamental to have something different over the competitors. And in particular, a new design was needed. This had to be done also very quickly since we were still in the early uh, phase of, of, of the concept of this product. Finally, a solution was found thanks to advanced fluid dynamic simulation that were used to achieve better indoor thermal comfort. Here in the picture, you can see the original design, the initial temperature map, and the improved temper temperature map. Uh, of course, this is not new in general, as this approach has been used in uh, automotive industry since many years. Actually, what is very new in, the, in this work was the use of, of advanced fluid dynamic simulation in uh, a bid phase. And this was enabled by fast and flexible modeling and computing capabilities, uh, also by the ability to evaluate different options and more important, uh, the customer involvement. So here we introduce an emerging best practice that we'll also see more in the next example where, um, where we use engineering simulation in a collaborative way, also engaging the customer in exploring different uh, options. The third example that you see here is a gym tool for weightlifting during the concept phase. Um, this was a configuration study of feasibility to improve user experience. What is new here is that even in the concept phase, we can account for different variables and also we can introduce the user experience and the human feelings into a virtual model. Here, we evaluated different options of mechanism, levers, seating, and ergonomic span of usability. Um, several different options were developed in a very short amount of time during the concept phase. And as output, we evaluated the forces and the load exchanged across the components in the multi-body system. This model also is very well suited for customization and for personalization in order to create a wide range of different user-tailored products. And looking at the future, where according to Industry 4.0, personalization will be the norm, well, this approach could be applied almost to every product. Let's see the last example. The last example is um, a virtual model of a paper assembly machine. The study was performed during the, uh, the review phase. So um, during the virtual prototyping phase, therefore uh, here we, we can see a very detailed design of the machine that provides a very uh, accurate representation of, where, of what really happens on field. Uh, here the value target were a combination of both product revenue growth uh, and product cost uh, operation efficiency. Our customer asked a very, very precise question that was, um, what is the maximum tolerable speed of this assembly operation? So in order to address this question, we perform a multi-body assembly study of um, the paper assembly machine for the evaluation, validation, and verification of different options of this uh, mechanism. Also evaluating the forces and the loads exchanged across the components of the system. And we uh, checked the ability to grab and to transport the, the product. This allowed to achieve faster machine cycles and significantly less errors. All the examples here provided are at the basis of the so-called digital twin concept that now will be illustrated by my colleague. So really, engineering simulation is an essential component of the digital twin paradigm. What does it mean? Really a virtual representation of the physical entity as close as possible to the real physical counterpart characteristic and behavior. So 
this is the direction and the future is going toward a fully detailed digital twin. But how far we are? It's a two, five or 10 years or even more. Centrally depend from the, on the application and the discipline. It's not a single step. Several elements are, is true, are already available, like digital mockup, and also many simulation are there. So the path is clear, but what is missed or what has to grow in the, all the component to have a, the full promise and advantages of the digital twin? One is uh, certainly computing time is intensive and uh, it's required. But if infrastructure costs are steadily going down. The second aspect is again uh, uh, modeling software, more able to capture specific physics, uh, multi physics in many cases, and interaction. They also need to become more easy to use for under certain aspect and have, have the, the ability to extract automatically relevant post processing information and results. Some of the analysis may have more than 10 gigabytes of data. And this is not uncommon. The third aspect is, is expected a boom in, in, a, in a requirement that is in personalization. And this goes into direction also the industry 4.0. And then consequently, and simulation runs. This means more data management is needed more infrastructure like uh, product life cycle management or simulation product and data management to manage the high amount of interrelated data which, which are generated by simulation and that are connected with the product development data. For last point, certainly uh, the digital twin paradigm require an approach that mind and mindset to use simulation enabler early in the process and as a key element and success factor. But it's clearly only a matter of time. So the why, the where and the how are becoming clear. What is more doubtful, but it's a, really the when, but what we observed in the last five, three, five years, it's really an acceleration beyond the initial, initial far forecast to go toward a digital twin. So in a, in a way, the role of simulation can be uh, designed as a better way to, to use it for innovation and business agility and that means uh, drive the development over very simply verify the design, explore and work by domains and multiple design optimization over defining point solution, and look for causes in the in the issues over fixing effects, and a continuous improvement over a simple support. In a sense, simulation will help to do really something great. Now, if we talk a little bit about the how, EngineSoft proposed itself as a global partner for the, you know, the journey toward digital twin. It's a global company with competent centers in Italy and abroad. It's about 20, 30 years in the market and then it's steadily grow from the initial FEM analysis toward the full set of engineering simulation tools. Uh, EngineSoft is also the organizer of the international conference and exhibition, which uh, will take place this year in Vicenza, Italy. And uh, every year, this is a stable location who will have uh, also in 2018 and, and the followings, uh, the data are in 2018 are still to be fixed. It is a large gathering with more than 800 participants and of course you are invited. EngineSoft offers four services. One is software, 
is training and education about the engineering simulation software. Also engineering services, uh, that means the, it's actually uh, the, applica the actual application on engineering simulation to design or validation uh, uh, problems and cases. And the last uh, is offering consulting survey on how to implement and how to reach uh, a good plateau level of uh, knowledge and application of engineering simulation. Let's take an example. One of the services that uh, EngineSoft offers is an uh, engineering simulation roadmap. So it starts from uh, setting up obje objectives, link it to the business objectives, and analysis of the uh, areas of practice and the determination of the current state is ease, what is the maturity level, what is the state of, what are the issue. This is a typical investigation, the last uh, two, three to four weeks, and then passes to a desired state based on best practice or new emerging practice where improvement and priority are determined. And then lastly, a uh, system fit gap, if it is the case, and the de definition of the roadmap uh, made of waves of implementation and considering also different aspects of the customer situation like uh, incoming project, budget, uh, status of the resources. So the overall exercise uh, is really fundamental to start thinking to see engineering simulation as an effective and advanced tool and last between four to six, uh, maybe sometime eight weeks, uh, depending from the size of the business unit uh, for the focus, of course, in the initial focus, the de finite and the budget. Um, the engineering simulation roadmap uh, focused in, in three main dimension. One is the core tool analysis. So looking at domains and application which are used at which level, what, which can be introduced. The second aspect is fundamental is really the way of working, whether the existing um, domain and application or the new, how to approach the domain, how the organization of the simulation team fits into the overall product development organization, whether some type of, type of process are followed or need to be defined, methods, and so on. Lastly, is the data and IT. So the first two dimension will not work without a proper infrastructure, and of course, without a data management tool. Now let's, let's look at two, uh, one example of an output of this uh, roadmap. This is an overview of the final results of our improvement portfolio analysis that we provide together with an implementation plan. As you can imagine, there are a lot of possible actions that, that can be implemented to grow your business through simulation. They depend both on your current situation and also on your priorities. To make it more clear, in this map we identified three macro areas in which some examples of improving actions were uh, grouped in terms of cost and benefit balance. To make an example, uh, let's see that there are some relatively inexpensive actions that can provide quick benefits in the short term. For example, the definition of repeatable procedures based on best practice to obtain computer-aided design models suited for engineering analysis. And secondly, the standardization of libraries to replace chaotic or user-based files and to be shared among the whole organization. Well, these are the so-called quick wins. On the other side, there are some other actions that provide significantly higher paybacks in the long term, like the implementation of an enterprise platform for simulation process and data management 
or like the full implementation of multi-physics and multidisciplinary design optimization procedures. It's just a matter of choice to balance on the basis of your priority criteria and your balance criteria. And we can help you make the best choice. It also requires a bit of mind, rationality, money, a bit of heart in terms of passion and desire, and also a bit of guts in terms of courage and risk-taking attitude. And that's all. As a final take, take out, I, I would like to highlight that um, we saw the engineering simulation can really be a fundamental tool to get better products out in the market. But who will be the winner? The winner is, is who is able to ban a better benefit from the engineering simulation and to adopt uh, technology and methods early in then the competition. Thank you.